let's add an animated gecko lib item to Minecraft. Oh, right, we find ourselves back in Telegram once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a gecko lib item, right? So this is going to be an animated item to Minecraft. So for this, I have already prepared the animated item model right here. And once again, with the actual animation, it's just going to be the gold cube going up and down, which might not be the most exciting thing, but it is definitely a custom thing. So that is pretty cool. This block bench file will once again be available, the BB model file, as well as the texture, of course, because that's the both things that you're going to need. And let's actually then get this. So for this, once again, you need the actual Gecko Lip Animation Utils plugin. That's very important. And this is specifically an item for Gecko Lip. And then we can export the Gecko Lip model over here. That's going to be the animated underscore item dot geo JSON. So this is going to be the, the actual model that we need. And then also the animations as well. So we go to animation, animation, export all animations. This is the idle animation. And this is going to be for the animated underscore item dot animation.json very important and last but not least we also want to go to file export export gecko lip display settings because that is going to be the animated item model json file so this is the item model json file and then also get that so we're going to have three json files for the item and we're going to have one texture file which i'm also going to save there you go so that's four files all from blockbench and now we can proceed first of all let's get all of these files in here so that's going to be the animation right here so there's gonna be animation json file absolutely and then we have the geo json file absolutely there you go and then we have the model file now this one goes into tutorial mode and then we're going to make a models folder and the reason why we of course have to do this and we can't use the data gen is because well i mean the actual animated item is completely different than what we can basically generate over here now I guess in theory, there's like some sort of way that you might be able to generate it, but you will see the file in just a moment and you will find that, I mean, yeah, you can probably create that, right, with a fixed rotation and all that, but like, then anytime you change the file in Blockbench, you would have to change the code. It, it doesn't make any sense, basically. Then also add the animated item over here in the item textures folder, and that would be that. And now we can create the item in the mod items class. Now this is going to be very interesting because we're going to need a custom item class as well as a custom item model and a custom item renderer. All sorts of crazy stuff. So in the item package, we're going to make a new package called custom. And we're going to make another custom package and that's going to be client. First of all, in the custom package, we're going to create the animated item class over here. This will extend, and this is actually quite important, this will extend the item class. There you go. And it will implement the geo item interface. So we're going to hover over this implement methods you can see it implements the create render method as well as the get render provider method, the register controls method, which we've already seen inside of the entity and the get animal instance cache, which we've also seen in the uh, in the actual entity. We're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super, and that should be pretty much what we need. Now we can create the private animatable cache. So there's the animatable instance cache called cache. It's going to be equal to a new singleton animated little cache, passing in this. Then we can already return this right here. And then the second thing that we actually want is we want a private final supplier of type object. Very interesting, very intriguing, which is the render provider. And this is going to be equal to geo item dot make renderer passing in this. And this is what we want to return right here in the renderer provider. So get render provider. We also want to make sure that inside of the class, we're actually overriding the get tick method. And this actually needs to be calling the following thing. And that is the render utils dot get current tick. Nope, that's not right. Get current tick. There you go. This one right here. And that should be pretty much what we need here. When it comes to the controller, this is pretty much the same idea, the registrar. And we're just going to add a new animation controller of type this in this case, and then calling it the controller. And then once again, using zero transition keys and saying this quote unquote predicate. Now the predicate once again does not exist, but we can just hover over this and create that method. And then here we just want an idle animation. So I'm actually going to copy over the contents of this, but this is pretty much going to be exactly the same thing that we've seen. Oh, this is actually T animation state. There you go. And this is pretty much the exact same thing that we've seen in the entity, right? We're just getting the controller, sending a new animation, this time called idle, and then just playing it in a loop and then returning turning the place hit continue. Right now, the create renderer, we can't do anything right here because, well, we don't have a renderer just yet. However, that is the last thing that we need to do. First of all, we're going to actually register the 
item. So in mod items class, we're going to take the raw citrine and this is going to be the animated item. So the name is not really that interesting, but the general idea is that this is just going to be an example on how to actually add this. This is going to be an animated item over here. We don't need to change anything else and just making sure that we also add this to a mod group, an item group over here, and then also just adding the translation over here. That would also be pretty good. There we go, animated item added. So now we can proceed to add the model and the renderer. So those are very close to the entity renderer and the entity model as well. So this is gonna be the animated item model, and then also the animated item item renderer. There we go. Once again, we're gonna start with the model. This will extend the geo model interface over here of type animated item mm. and we're going to hover over this implement methods and you can see is once again the resource methods over here so this is fairly straightforward just a just an identifier over here with tutorial mod dot mod id and then the geo slash animated underscore item dot geo dot json there we go and then we'll just copy over this making sure to change this to textures slash item animated item dot png very important that the ending the final ending here is also correct otherwise this will not work and this is the animations animated item dot animation dot json that should be absolutely everything that we need absolutely perfect and then we can proceed to the renderer which is actually the easiest class of them all this is the geo item renderer of type animated item again we're going to hover over this create the constructor matching super and in this case, we don't need anything inside of the actual constructor. We just want to say in the super, a new animated item model. There you go. And for this, we can now take this class and actually create a new instance of it in the create a renderer method right here. So in the animated item class, we want to say consumer dot accept a new render provider. And this is going to be an anonymous class in this case. And this is exactly right. We want to override the get custom render method inside of it. And we also want to do a private, we want to do a private final animated item renderer called renderer. This is going to be equal to a new item renderer. There you go, right? So this is just going to be the just created animated item renderer class, which is going to create a final field for that. And then just returning this dot renderer. And there you go. That's all that we need to do. Now, crazily enough, if I'm not mistaken, this should actually be all the things that we need. Now you can see it definitely is a little bit more complicated than just adding a normal item. But overall, the model here is pretty much straightforward, right? It just points the JSON file, the PNG file, and the other JSON file. The renderer literally just creates the actual model. And in the item itself, there's a few more things going on. But, you know, the cache over here is pretty straightforward. The render provider is pretty straightforward. And then the predicate is pretty much the same thing as the entity itself. The only thing that's a little bit new is probably the create render method but overall the general idea is just that hey we're just creating a new renderer for this particular item and so just take this renderer which points to the model and then the rest is just displayed properly as we would expect it to so after all those steps are done let's go into the game and see if it works all right found ourselves in minecraft and let's take a look and there it is the animated item and you should be able or to already see that it is animated if in the inventory and it is also animated when i hold it and it is even animated right freaking there so you can see it is animated Everywhere where I have it, whether on whether or not I have the left one on the right one, or I mean wherever I basically you know have this item, it is animated. It is even animated, and this is crazy enough, but it is true, right? So if I build a wall over here and I make an item frame, you might be like, wait, this you can't be serious. Oh, I am serious. It is animated. Now, now it looks a little wonky over here. This is done in Blockbench itself, so you can basically change how it's displayed in an item frame. But there you go. That is the custom animated Gecko Lip item added to Minecraft. All right, that's going to be for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.